Good morning, everybody. No, I am not Ray Hewitt. No, that is not Jeff Gars. No, that's not Brad Hughes. But this is your daily drop in the Teach Better Team's daily morning show for educators. Today is Tuesday, and uh, you got some different faces, some different voices, some different names, some different personalities that are waking you up today. But we are so glad to be here. So stick around, whether you are on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, or LinkedIn, wherever you are, join us in the comments. Let us know you're here. Say good morning. Encourage us a little bit because we have no idea what we're doing or what buttons we're supposed to be pushing. We're just going to be here hanging out. So come on back in about 30 seconds. Join me and Eric as we uh, start your Tuesday off. So we will see you soon, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Daily Drop-In, where we go live every single morning to hang out with amazing educators, talk shop, and just wake up a little bit. So whether you're on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, or LinkedIn, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here and for joining us. Drop a message in the, the comments. Let us know that you're here. Say good morning to my good friend, Dr. Eric Youngman, and wish him well this morning for waking up bright and early with us. Eric, thank you so much for being here today, buddy. Absolutely. Anytime I can join Teach Better and anytime I can chat with you, I'm happy to do it. Well, don't don't say that because we haven't made it through this yet and you have no idea how this conversation is going to go. You're right. uh, but I, I'm super excited to have you here. Normally, we hang out about an hour from now um, in our mastermind group, but today we get to start our day together. So, so thanks for being here. Um, Absolutely. Eric, there might be some people that are new to you. Um, they've seen your name before. They've heard us talk about you before, but they've never actually heard your voice and heard you share who you are and what you do. And then we were just talking off off air about some of the changes that are happening a little bit. But tell people, who are you and what do you do? Good morning. In the end, I'm an education leader. I'm also an author. I'm also in a, a consultant um, and a father of three lovely daughters. Um, but more specifically, um, I'm in Libertyville District 70. Um, a month ago, I was the curriculum director, and then I was the interim superintendent, and last night I was named the assistant superintendent. So um, there's been some transition, but we still have amazing staff, parents, and students in Libertyville. Um, so I'm excited to continue to work as those jobs change. Um, I've also written a couple of books. Um, one was about homework, um, 12 Characteristics of Deliberate Homework. Um, the other one was a kid's book that just came out in January, The Magic of a Growth Mindset. Um, those are two topics I talk about most frequently, um, but it's been great because now as I'm starting to write more, um, I'm getting involved in different projects. There's a couple other books behind me um, where I've been able to write chapters or vignettes for. Um, I'm in the middle right now of writing a parent blog um, because an organization um, reached out to me. So just some awesome opportunities to think differently. Um, and a lot of the time, it's just really to encourage parents, um, educators, and students to really think with a growth mindset. That's so cool. And, and so I've, I've got to ask, uh, first of all, father of three amazing girls, you said, um, assistant superintendent now, plus you got all this extra free time to sit around and write books and blogs and all of this other stuff. Let's go back to the, the parent of three girls thing. Last night, I had an experience that uh, kind of rocked my world. My daughter, I've got four kids, but only one daughter. She's a dancer. And last night I took on the role of dance mom. And I was the only dad in the dance mom world during dress rehearsals. Have you ever had um, to experience the, the dance mom world? Well, not the dance mom, but my three daughters had danced when they were younger. So a couple of okay. times I was forced to get on stage and dancing is probably not my favorite thing to do. Okay. Um, but they also play a lot of soccer, basketball, and golf. And so um, this weekend, I'm the basketball dad, so I get to keep score and and chat with the referees and the and the parents. And you know, sometimes now that she's a sophomore in high school, they go off to do their team lunches, and I may have to wander off by myself and 
uh, find some sports on TV and, and look at my papers in my pocket because I'm also writing at that time. Um, gotcha. Then my eighth grader has soccer games, and so I'm driving out to Schaumburg for 8.30 Thursday night soccer games. And, again, watching soccer and getting home at 11 o'clock but enjoying every minute of it. But no dance. That's awesome. No dance. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, I, I love that that balance. So, yeah, g- growing up, I, I played – uh, a lot of sports. I've shot free throws with no time on the clock. I've had to take the the um, the the last pitch in the bottom of the ninth. But I have never felt pressure like I felt last night putting on lipstick on a, <laughs> a little girl um, in front of dance moms. That is intense because they will let you know whether or not it's right or wrong. So so God bless you and and awesome that you're able to find all of that balance. I I talk to people all the time who say, I want to write a book. I want to put something out there. I've got all these ideas out there. But then they they have valid excuses of, but I don't know when I'm going to find the time to do it. I don't know when I'm going to be able to fit it into my busy life and my busy schedule. But you've been able to do this now multiple times. And it sounds like it's not always about finding additional time. It's utilizing the time you have and putting it in there while you're sitting on the sidelines or while you're waiting around for, for the kids to show up or something along those lines. Are you intentional about finding writing time? <laughs> I'm intentional. It's kind of funny. I was watching Thursday night soccer last weekend and I had a Wisconsin Badger sweatshirt on. I was listening to some music and writing and a couple people talked to me as if they thought I was a scout for Wisconsin Badgers. Um, <laughs> but I'm watching the girls play. Um, and the same time I'm thinking and writing. I think my latest secret was Um, I'll usually create a slide that I tweet out probably twice a week. And then usually I can see some connections between some of those slides. And that's what I'm doing for this parent blog. So I'm thinking of some of the slides that I created. I'm connecting some of them. And I've done that for some of the Teach Better blogs as well. Um, But again, sometimes once you start going down that road on a specific topic, then you can keep building on it and it leads to a blog um, or a book or an article. So again, I think the more you have to define it, Um, So even, for example, growth mindset, I was presenting to a high school last week to teachers, and that's very different compared to fifth graders that I'm going to present to about that topic on Friday. And each time I try to talk about it differently um, and at least help them understand what my takeaway is. And so um, just like we understand when we're working with students in the classroom, if you have an opportunity to teach others like you all the time do, Dave, you have to get better at your clarity um, in the questions that you ask. And so As I'm also teaching others, I'm learning. Um, But again, that enhances that clarity as I continue to talk about it and different people ask different questions about it. I I love that. And I feel like we can we can geek out on this for a little bit here on on a Tuesday morning. I'm going to go there in just a second. I want to say good morning to a few people. Um, I see Jeff Gargas hanging out at the airport right now. He's (laughs) heading to I believe it's Palm Springs. I mean, he's really taking one for the team here today, flying to Palm Springs to sacrifice and, and help share the, the Teach Better message. You got Chad Ostrowski hanging out. Chad Ostrowski just finished a marathon on Sunday, and he's still alive to talk about it today. So good morning to, to Chad and Facebook user who's hanging out, talking to dance moms with us. Good morning to you and everybody else that's joining us. Good morning. Good morning, uh, morning Chad with- and Jeff and Dave. Didn't you also run? I was listening to some of the previous episodes and I heard Ray talking about you enjoying pizza and beer after you ran. <laughs> I, I forgot where you ran, but I heard that. Yeah, yeah. I, I've I've been foolish enough to run six marathons in my life. And uh, wow. I've got my seventh on the calendar now for this November in New York. But this past weekend, I, I ran in a local 10K here. And at the finish line, the finish line was right out in front of a bar where they were passing out free pizza and beer to anybody that had a, a bib on. So I was happy to cross that finish line. I'll tell you that. It was fun. Good for you. And look fun. for marathons next to dance competitions. You can put on <laughs> lipstick and run and have pizza and beer. There you go. Sounds like the, the perfect one win. It's all about putting it all together. That's symbiosis, right? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So Eric, Eric you're talking about the, the growth mindset. Um, can we talk about that a little bit? Because I am extremely intrigued by the, the concept that I've been really studying a lot lately of unlearning to learn and recognizing that you don't know it all. And this is extremely intriguing for me as talking to you as, as a leader, because I know when I was a, a building leader and a district leader, there was this temptation to feel like you were supposed to have all the answers to all the things for all the people at all times. Uh, but I quickly realized that the more that you pretend to know, the fewer people come to you for answers, right? Um, and you you do a lot of work, both presenting and writing about the growth mindset, which is in essence, recognizing that you're not perfect and recognizing that you can still improve 
in any aspect in life. How did you find that awareness to say, this is something that educators need to know more about? I started learning from Carol Dweck and just reading yeah. some of the articles and books that she had, but a lot of my initial connections were at, with athletics. So I played mm -hmm. a lot of soccer, basketball, and baseball and golf. Um, and just hearing some of that feedback, hearing some of the players talk. Um, and now a lot of the sports are investing in those sports psychologists. So just listening to articles pertaining to that, um, I thought was very relevant. Um, and then I started to make connections to what that means for leadership, what that means in the classroom. Um, recently, I've been trying to interact with the writing community on Twitter. And it's just amazing how they talk about one of my tweets a couple of days ago was just how about the editing process, how much time authors spend in the editing process. Um, there's a great correlation with growth mindset and how you have to persevere and reflectively look at continuing to get better. Um, I know sometimes you have talked about grades and you know the whole focus really should be on learning. And I know sometimes teachers feel like there's not enough time, but writing is a great example. Um, how can you give them feedback? How can you give them rubrics in advance so they can continue to make it better? And let's not worry about the grade. We talk about the grades way too often, um, but how can they act on feedback? How can they be aware of their effort and their attitude and just continue to get better? Um, again, it's very similar in sports. It's very easy where um, people can just be aware and self-assess what their effort and attitude is. Um, the biggest things I've been focused on lately is how everyone can embrace and learn from mistakes and challenges. Because if we kind of think of our trajectory, we're all just doing the same thing. If we're writing, um, if we're learning. But once we get that feedback, um, it typically is about a mistake. Um, or once we get that encouragement um, because of a challenge, that's where the true growth begins. And so if we can think of ourselves as a leader, as a learner, as an athlete, and focus on those two points, I think that's where we're really going to see the most growth. I love that. And in a few minutes, we're going to go to the brainstorm bank. And I'm going to ask you a related question to that idea of, of growing and improving and, and challenging. But I, I also want to recognize that this idea of reflecting and, and growing is difficult. It seems like it should be natural because we've all grown and we've all matured throughout our life, but it's so difficult. You know, I, I oftentimes tell people, if we look at a, a taxonomy of learning, that typically at the top of those taxonomies, is creation or innovation. But if I were to create a new one, I would have reflection at the top of that because it is so difficult to look at something that you've already put your blood, sweat, and tears into that you thought was amazing and then look at it and say, man, how can I continue to make it better? How can I continue to improve it? We look at our sixth, seventh, eighth graders out there and we say, Re revise your paper before you turn it in. And they just look at it and turn it right in. I mean, we all do that. We're, we're in the defense business way more than we are in the growth business where we want to defend what we've done as opposed to acknowledge the opportunity to continue to learn and grow. So in just a second, if you're okay, I want you to throw your leadership hat on. And I'm going to ask you a question when we come into our brainstorm bank about that very concept. Because right now we're at the time of year where we've got evaluations taking place. We've got final observations taking place. Yet leaders are oftentimes thinking about next year already and how all of those worlds converge. So are you okay if in just a second we come back from the brainstorm making, I ask you a very specific leadership question and have you unpack it as the new assistant superintendent of all things? Are you comfortable with that? Absolutely. All right. So sit tight. And in nine seconds, I'm going to put you on the spot. So here we go. All right. So we are here on the Daily Drop-In Morning Show on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, LinkedIn, all the places, having some conversations with my buddy, Dr. Eric Youngman, the newly appointed assistant superintendent, former curriculum director, now assistant superintendent means you're still doing that, plus a lot of other things. So um, you just have to wear fancier suits and fancier shoes, apparently. I, I don't know what goes along with that promotion, but you got it. And it also means that you are now in the hot seat for our brain storm bank. Eric, are you ready for this? In the brainstorm bank, we have people that can send us questions and hope that we will respond. And I'm going to ask you a question that was sent directly to me this weekend. And I held off on it knowing that I was going to be talking to you thinking, Ooh, I'm going to ask you this question and see what you can say. Are you prepared for this? Let's do it. All right. So Eric, you, you and I, we hang out 
um, just about every week in our mastermind group, which is a group of leaders from around the country that brainstorm. We lean in and we just talk about problems of practice and ways that we all want to grow and improve and, and stretch ourselves. And I think because of my contact with the mastermind community, somebody sent me an email on Saturday. It was a teacher who sent the email um, and I'm going to leave their name out of this. But I did encourage them to, to watch this or to watch the replay of this so they can try to get your, your perspective. So in essence, I'm going to summarize their email. They explained that last week they had their final observation from their administrator. And they had the, they call it their summative evaluation, where they had to sit down across from the desk and have a conversation. And in essence, they explained that this year has been super hard. And all they wanted this year was for their administrator to support them and encourage them. But instead, their administrator gave them lots of things to grow on and improve on. And this educator said, and I don't have the energy for it. What do I do? It's interesting. So, so Eric, I'm, I'm curious. You know, at this time of year, there is this tension between support, encouragement, and opportunities for growth, change, and reflection. So how do we balance all of those things at the end of April, beginning of May, as educators are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but yet a lot of leaders and administrators are seeing that light just leading to next school year? How do we find that balance? I think there is that balance. There's an awareness of how are the teachers feeling. So that's empathy um, and understanding what is happening in the classrooms. And then there's that balance of what the school board and what the parents expect about that continuous improvement and high quality. So I think if you go back to what is the school district's vision and what are some common expectations and what is some common language, I think you can go back to that because then that can isolate some of the focus on a few topics. Um, so I think the more targeted you are, that will help you in a variety of things. And I, can, I think that can help in this setting because if the school district and the school and the teachers have four, five, eight goals, and they're not aligned, um, that's going to be a challenge. But if you have maybe three goals that everyone is working on, I think then you can continue to guide and reflect and assess growth on those topics. Um, mm -hmm. Again, sometimes you're going to have to understand what is happening different in that classroom. Sometimes it's a specific grade level um, that just has some students that um, have a little bit more um, classroom management challenges. So you might um, have a different pace um, because you need different relationships in those classrooms. Sometimes you're teaching or learning in a pandemic and that is going to change things. So you have to adjust your course. So I think being realistic, um, truly understanding, again, I can sit in my office and think everything is okay. Um, if I walk into the school and into the classroom and talk to those students and teachers, you can pick up on some of that stress. Um, you can pick up on some of those challenges. Um, I am a parent, um, so I can hear what my daughters talk about when they come home. My wife is a speech pathologist working with four and five-year-old students. I can hear what they're going through as well. So I think it's an awareness of what's going on in the public. Um, that is helpful to me to hear about other school districts. And then what is happening in your school district. And then truly understanding your teachers as well. Um, mm. I don't like talking about the pandemic too much, but everything has been back to normal in the schools where we are all there, we're all working with the students um, and some businesses are not even back in person yet. And so we don't know what our family's going through, what are our teachers going through. Um, they may have some of their own children at home with different school situations. Their spouse may have different situations as well. So I just bring that up because that relationships and understanding with your teachers um, is very critical as well. If I know you are going through something different. My interactions and expectations and support will and should look different um, just as it is for a student in the classroom where I differentiate. So again, I think the short answer is focused common language as well as differentiated support um, as well as empathy to understand what is going on and what is changing and evolving. Oh, that's so good. So good. I, and I love how you spoke directly to the, the leaders on that one to say, here's what you need to be focusing on because especially that empathy piece, we don't know what's happening in the lives of our educators right now. That doesn't mean a free pass by any stretch of the imagination. You know, <clears throat> a, a, must've been 18 months ago now. Wow, maybe, maybe even longer than that. Um, I wrote a piece about the difference between empathy, trust, 
and grace and how empathy requires a lot of effort, a lot of work because it's not just a free pass. It's also, uh, it, it's, not, it's not just looking at somebody and saying, do whatever you want. Empathy requires us to do the work because we need to truly understand what somebody's going through so that we can stand beside them. And so if you want to be that empathetic leader, it's not a free pass, it's just assumptions of it must be hard. You truly need to dig in and figure out why it's hard and how you can support that work. So I love that, Eric. That was awesome. That was awesome. And also, I think shared ownership as well, because we can say, ultimately, I'm accountable for some of these decisions. You as a teacher, as a principal, we are accountable. So I think that shared accountability, um, if they have involvement in some of those decisions about the direction and areas of focus, but ultimately understanding that we have ownership of things we have to do to help our students. And so sometimes it is a challenge of how hard we need to push or encourage. Um, I think you've said it recently also, and I use that terminology a lot about learning and unlearning. Um, mm -hmm. What are some things that we have to learn more and get better at? What are some practices that we need to stop doing or reflect about also I think is pertinent. And then I'm trying to not be distracted, but I also see some comments. Brianne has a question. I was just gonna what go is there. Your biggest yeah. pet peeve, I didn't wanna go there. Um, but your biggest pet peeve when doing an interview. So we can finish our conversation, but I did want to acknowledge we can jump to that at some point. Let, let's do it now. Let's do it now. That's, that's the beauty of the brainstorm bank is that people can just say, hey, I got another question for you. So Brianne Fennell, who is an amazing uh, member of our team, actually, she's leading uh, Brain Break tomorrow evening as well. So people that are interested, Brianne Fennell, uh, play yay aficionado. She's leading Brain Break. And she's got a question for us about interviewing. So in the comments, she wrote, what is your biggest pet peeve when doing interviews? So I can only imagine you've done your fair share of interviews, either being the interviewee or the interviewer. Um, and there are some things that you can look at and be like, ooh, I don't like it when dot, dot, dot. So what, what do you have for that one, Eric? What are some of your biggest pet peeves? Uh, I mean, I've been talking recently with some staff members and even at presentations about perfectionism. Um, and I also read an article that was talking about interviews and that discussion of it. So I think, again, it's just being real. We don't expect people to be perfect. Um, but what have they learned from different circumstances? I'm really looking at how are they growing and evolving? Um, so sometimes when they talk about being a perfectionist, you can talk about having um, desire and goals and quality. But at the same time, let us understand how you're continuing to evolve and get better. Um, that's one thing that, again, just in my mind, I think through as, as, as people are talking. So have you had people sit down and say, I am a perfectionist, actually use those words? Or do you pick up on the fact that they feel like they've made no mistakes ever? Sometimes they actually say that word. And again, it's, it's for best intentions. They're trying to say, I'm a quality person. I'm a perfectionist. Um, but again, there's, going to, there's so many variables um, and so many things that change that they need to evolve as well. So it's just something little that lately I've been, um, you know, noticing and trying to, again, help even, even my daughters. I have a sixth, eighth and 10th grader and my eighth grader just had to go through an interview, interview to be a soccer referee. And it was funny to listen to hear my 10th grader giving her advice and me as well, just about things to expect. And so, again, as long as you can expect um, to talk about why you are good for the job, but also how you're continuing to evolve, um, I think that's a good place to start. So is it fair to say then you should just go in completely disheveled and a mess with like uh, stains all over your face from what you ate for breakfast and uh, a tie undone tripping over your shoelaces because you don't want to be seen as somebody with it all together? No, you absolutely have to look good. You have to speak of all the good things you're doing. Um, but at the same time, really talk about how you continue to evolve um, and how you help others um, when they make mistakes as well. Oh, that's so that's so good. And so if people are looking for some practical advice, A, just reach out to, to Eric and he'll fill you in. He's this growth mindset champion who's written lots of amazing things all about it. Uh, you can also look up, I don't know if you're familiar with Adam Grant. Do you read any of Adam Grant's work? So powerful. So good. I see some of his Twitter stuff. I don't always get into all of his articles, but he has some awesome content. Yeah, he does. He he writes books that that feel a little Malcolm Gladwell esque. So social psychology, but super easy to read. It's the kind of stuff that will just slap you across the face. You're like, oh yeah, I need to unlearn that. I, I do need to be a little bit more humble and and recognize that I have opportunities to improve and grow. So um, and you're you're preaching it right now. And as somebody that just got a promotion last night. You are a walking testament that this works. This works. 
Well, the funny part is, again, when I'm presenting, like I said, I was presenting to a high school staff and then I was presenting to fourth and fifth graders. And each time, like as I'm as soon as I'm done, I'm like, what are three things I could have done better? You know, how can I modify the slides? How can I ask the questions differently? Um, what are the takeaways I can give them? So, again, it's just that reflection. Um, how can we keep getting better? Because when you talk to the students, they have some awesome information. If you can just ask them the right question, um, I'm asking them feedback. Um, one of the talks in the presentation, I talk about learning and being inspired from others rather than competing with them. Mm. So one of my takeaway questions was to ask them, it was four questions and one of them was give an example. And one of these classes just really focused just on that, where I don't always just want to compete against um, other students. I want to learn from them and get better. So again, I think if we can teach people different lenses and terminology, I think it's good because then they can reflect on it and ultimately that can change their actions too. So good. So good. Hey, I think we have time for one more question. I see uh, Bree just threw another question and she's asking for a friend. So I'm putting air quotes here because I'm, I'm not sure if she's asking for a friend or if she's asking for herself. But so you and I both have the 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 name doctor. We're Dr. Schmidt, Dr. Youngman. Um Completed our, our programs. How long ago did you did you complete your doctorate? 2017. So five 2017. years. 2017. Okay. So your your five years in. I completed mine in 2011. So um, I just hit the 11 year mark actually just the other day. Um, but her question is an interesting one, and I'm gonna. I don't know if she means it through the lens of interviewing, but we're gonna talk about it through the lens of interviewing. You go through the interview phase, and now you've got that face to face with the superintendent. And her question is. How do you know if the superintendent is a doctor or Mr. or Mrs. or Miss or what title to give that person? And how do you address them without it coming, coming across disrespectful, which is as an much, interesting question. As much research as you can do. I mean, you can check their email or the website that might give it away. Um, but otherwise, I think uh, Bart Simpson would do it well. I think he'd talk about Principal Skinner. Um, a couple of times when I was principal, they'd call me Principal Youngman, and I just, it was different. Um, but I think my answer would be just call him Superintendent, Superintendent um, Schmidt. Um, that's one way to do it. I think sometimes it's a formality, um, but if you're unsure, I think that's a very respectful way to do it. That's what I would do. If people call you Mr. Youngman, do you correct them? It is what it is. I am so proud of being a doctor. Um, my daughters joke with me all the time about it. Um, but you know, they joke with me, why are we the same name as a medical doctors? I don't know, but that's what they call me. Um, but if anyone else does, it is what it is. I'm proud. And I kind of smile internally when I am called doctor. Um, if, if it's not, if I'm not called that, call me whatever. Like I said, I'm a scoreboard keeper for my daughter. You can call me whatever, um, smile. It is what it is. The point is how can we collectively work together? Because usually when someone is talking to me, um, there's some sort of partnership for our school district, for our students, um, for our teachers. Um, they might be a prospective student. They might be a college student um, as they're working with them. It is what it is. I'm an educator. I'm here to help. I'm a dad. I, I call me whatever. It, it's funny. You know, when I, when I got my doctorate, it sounded really cool to, to have everybody call me doctor. I, I was so excited. And, and now it, it feels weird to, when I'm being introduced as Mr. It feel like it's, I, I can hear the difference, but it's interesting uh, back Wow, 25 years ago, it would have been weird if somebody called me Bachelor Schmidt. Um, I mean, technically, I guess I was before I got married, but I had my bachelor's, which should be, should you call me bachelor because I have my bachelor's or master because I've got my master's. But when we get doctor, it's throw the title out there, which I, hey, I'm a fan of it. We worked hard for it. So, so go for it. But I love that advice. Call them by what they do. That might be a, a great way to do it. Superintendents, blah, blah, blah. And then you don't have to worry about playing the dance. So good advice. Good advice. And great questions today, Bree. Appreciate that. I had never heard that bachelor or master. That's hilarious. Now I'm going <laughs> to think about that. Well, it, it, or you can be an associate, right? I mean, there's so many different uh, different places to go with that, but it's fun. So Eric, now we, I want to make sure that the, the daily drop in today is not all business. You've given us a lot of value, a lot of interview advice, a lot of practical advice, a lot of advice on just how to improve and and grow. But the daily drop-in show is also an opportunity for people to just to wake up if they're sipping their coffee, if they're driving to work, and they just they need to feel good about life. Are you okay if I transition us into some good news of the day? This is something that Ray Hewitt really celebrates. This is one of her favorite parts of the daily drop-in show. So I want to make sure I hit it. 
we're able to go out there and grab something that's it's just going to make us smile a little bit today. Are you cool with that? Everyone needs to smile. All right. So 13 seconds. We'll be back with some good news. All right, so welcome back to Daily Drop In, where we hang out with amazing educators to get your day started. We inspire you, we grow you, we challenge you, and every once in a while, we share some good news here on Twitter and YouTube and LinkedIn and Twitch and Facebook and all the places. Say we've got Dr. 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 Eric Youngman joining us. He just spent a lot of time giving us some interview advice, talking about the growth mindset, trying to find balance. What it's like to be like to be a dance dad versus a soccer dad versus a basketball dad versus just amazing in general. But we are about to transition into our good news of the day. This is, like I said, one of Ray Hewitt's favorite topics to talk about here on Daily Drop In because it just it leaves you with a smile. Sometimes we turn on NPR, we turn on CNN or Fox News or whatever, wherever you go to get your news and you're just flooded with images and you think, oh, is there any hope for humanity? But there is. And uh, I'm here to share our good news story of the day. Eric, are you ready for this? You ready for a little smile and a little hope and a little pick me up? Can't wait. All right. Do you have any pets, by any chance, Eric? That's a tough subject. I grew up with so many pets, and my daughters pester me daily to get a pet, but we're so busy because of yeah. athletics. No. Okay. So I have a, a couple of dogs. I have an almost 12 year old multi poo, which is part poodle, part Maltese. It's basically a big snowball. Um, and about three months ago, we got a golden doodle puppy. Um, having a puppy is, it's crazy. A lot of things are being gnawed on and chewed on, but we put a doggy door into our backyard and it's been a game changer. And now the, the dogs, their best friends are already, they go and they hang out outside all day long, which is awesome. But we've got a little problem because I don't know if you're familiar with golden doodles at all, but they like to dig. And they like to dig all the things. So I've got this golden doodle now that has created basically a minefield in my backyard. Lots of holes all over the place. And that takes us to the good news story. So the good news story of the day, the title of the headline is, Family's New Puppy Digs Up $8,000 in Gold Coins. That's pretty sweet. Come on. That's awesome. I mean, that that's that's what I'm looking for right there. I, I've got a minesweeper out there that's going to go out there and start panning for gold, basically. That's hopefully my hope. Hopefully the family get to keep the gold, and then hopefully the dog got a bone out of it, too. I don't know what the end result of the story is. <laughs> well, that that is, that's that's it. They, they won the lottery. Not really they get this cute little adorable puppy that they were so furious about. Now the puppy found $8,000 in gold by going out there and destroying the yard. And I'm thinking about that. Because my dog, I'm doing the corrective training thing and trying to remind him, you don't dig holes, you don't dig holes. After something like that, though, it's hard to reprimand and say, don't dig holes. Now it's be strategic. I want you to start sniffing out the gold before you dig the holes, right? <laughs> Have you looked in any of those holes that your dog has dug yet? I haven't, but that's an interesting question. Like, why do dogs dig? What are they looking for? Is it just a reaction to, to try to get out? Are they just trying to, uh, to burn off energy? Or are they searching for something? I don't know. I huh. assume it's based on what they smell, but I don't know. Huh. That's interesting. Well, I guess I know what I'm doing this afternoon. I'm going to go out back and start panning around just a little bit to see what's in, at the bottom of each of these holes. Because if there's $8,000 down there, um, that, that, that could buy me a few new hats. I'm, I'm down for that. That's interesting. So, people, the moral of the story is you never know what's at the bottom of the hole. So you might feel like you're just trying to dig yourself out but there might be $8,000 sitting at the bottom just waiting for you. So keep digging, keep digging a little bit further or, or go buy yourself a puppy and have your puppy sniff around a little bit. So um, hopefully that inspires you. Maybe maybe I, you can replay this back for your daughters and that'll get you a puppy or a dog and they can use that to encourage you, Eric. What do you think? We'll cut it at, at the 30 minute <laughs> mark so they don't hear that story. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So um, that is the good news story of the day. Um, in my own world, I've got a lot of interesting, cool, good things that are happening. In a second, Eric, I'm going to ask you what's good and what's happening in your world. Um, in, in my world right now, number one, 
I get to host Daily Drop In all week long because Ray and Jeff are traveling all across the country doing things. So I get to hang out with amazing people like you, which excites me. My kids were just telling me that four weeks from today is their last day of school here in Florida, which is super exciting for them. They've got lots of visions of grandeur in their minds of um, beaches and sunshine and pool and sleeping in. What's going on in your world? What is your good news, Eric? It has been so busy in the school district with all of the changes, but um, I have had some awesome opportunities to do some presentations with different school districts and with our students, so I am enjoying that. Um, I'm enjoying watching my daughters play basketball, soccer, and golf. They have a lot of tournaments coming up this summer, which means uh, frequent travels um, to different locations, different states to watch them play. And then we're going to end July with an Alaskan cruise. We were planning on going before the pandemic. We could not get a refund. Um, So I think we wanted to stick in the U.S. rather than our initial route that was going to Belize and Honduras. Um, But as a family, we'll go on an Alaskan cruise. So that should be a good way um, to end the summer that we're approaching. <clears throat> that is legitimately awesome. I am so jealous of you right now. That sounds so cool. So cool. I'm going to, so I, I'm hoping that you're going to be posting tons and tons of pictures of that because that is one of those epic bucket list things. So, well, there's some cool excursions. It looks like we'll do something with sled dogs. It looks like we're going to helicopter to a glacier. So we'll see what happens. And the fact that you can do that in July is just mind blowing to me. That's so cool. That is so cool. All right. Well, that is definitely some good news. And so speaking of good news for today, today, April 26th, uh, another little thing that we like to do is honor some of the the amazing holidays that take place on each day. And we know there are Hallmark holidays for everything, but some of these are pretty cool. Some of these are pretty fun. And the first one is going to be a shout out to all of our Freeport friends, our friends from Freeport, Illinois, because today is National Pretzel Day. That's right. Freeport, the home of the pretzels, the Freeport pretzels, National Pretzel Day. So hopefully they're all out there celebrating. Maybe they have the day off of school even. I don't know. But today is National Pretzel Day, which is pretty cool. Today is also Audubon Day. Um, And I'm going to keep this one a secret. It's National Get Organized Day. Um, Challenge accepted. It is National Dissertation Day. So yay for everybody that's uh, racking that up. Today is also National Richter Scale Day. It's a day that we pay tribute to the man who invented the Richter Scale that measures earthquakes. And last but not least, National Help a Horse Day. So while you're out there chewing on your pretzels, people, if you happen to pass by a horse, maybe give them a nibble, give them a little pat, help them out a little bit. National Horse Day. I'm sorry, National Help a Horse Day. National Pretzel Day. Get it organized day. Richter Scale Day and dissertation day. So a lot going on, people. Good luck celebrating. I I can only imagine the buffets and the festivities that are going to be on display wherever you are as you lean in and celebrate these amazing days. Hopefully there's no earthquakes, but enjoy your pretzel on your horse as you finish your dissertation. There you go. While you're getting organized, finishing that dissertation. There you go. That's that's good. You know, it's interesting, all these national holidays. I'm wondering what it takes to get something recognized as a national holiday. How do we start that process? Because I have some ideas for sort of some national holidays. Um, I would love to have, well, these, these things probably already exist. Um, national Margarita Day. I'm sure that exists at some point. Um, national Go for a Run Day. National Wear a Hat Backwards Day. What holidays would you, would you want to see on the calendar if you could create something, Eric? I'm sure there's a National Golf Day. Uh, one of the golf courses by me a couple years ago said it was $100 for all you can golf. So me and my buddy got in. How many holes do you think we got in? 72? It's a great course, and we got in 82 holes. Holy cow. 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. We're finally on the 82nd hole. They're like, all right, guys, you have to go. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That right is now, so that was maybe five years ago. I don't think I could do that with my bad back anymore. I could play 36, but... Not eighty two anymore. Are, are you a are you are you a decent golfer too, or do you just go out there just for fun? I would say I'm an average golfer. I mean, it was awesome. I was out in Phoenix uh, with my brother in law, and he took my daughter and me to play TPC Scottsdale, and that's where they just had the PGA event, the Waste Management Open. Yeah. So that was amazing. Uh, we had to have a caddy, but my sixteen year old only lost one ball. She did awesome. So I love golf, and I'm not the best, but 
Um, she parred that three hole or, or the par three hole yeah. that they build the stadium around. Yeah. I unfortunately got a four. So it's a bummer that Annika is doing a little better than me sometimes. That is awesome. It, that's a sport that I have this love hate relationship with. I love it when I'm out there. Um, I hate looking at my scorecard and I hate paying to play. Um, if, if I were better, I would enjoy paying to play a little bit more, but you got to pay so much to get better. It's just this, it's this weird trap that I'm stuck in right now, but I absolutely love the game. So have you been playing your whole life? I wish I would have started earlier. In high school, I played soccer, basketball, and baseball. I wish I would have had golf more then, okay. uh, but I more started after college. Um, but I continue to play. I mean, now because of a family, sometimes it's better if I can play nine holes in the morning um, or just play quick because on the weekends when it's five hours, I don't have that time because I'm driving my daughters everywhere. But it's an awesome sport. And recently now my daughter's playing high school golf, so she's doing lessons and hopefully she'll keep working and getting better at it. But it, it's awesome. If I can golf with my daughters, that's just as good as golfing with my friends. That's so good. And nothing will teach and reinforce humility and that growth mindset like playing golf. So if, if you're one of those people that struggles with perfectionism, feeling like you have to have all the answers for all the things and that you don't ever do anything wrong, just go grab a club, head out to your local course and play nine holes and see what happens. <laughs> That'll change your world. Oh, that's good. That's good. Favorite course? Where, where's your the best place you've ever played? Well, TPC Scottsdale, I just played that one. That's, I mean, I don't think we'll ever play a course like that again. So that one was amazing. Um, so that's my favorite right now. That's cool. I, my brother-in-law who lives out in California um, had a guy's trip for his birthday last year and went and played at Pebble Beach um, and said it was just it was truly, it, it was like the Alaskan cruise of his life. It was that bucket list. And he said it would, it met every single one of his expectations. So, well, I was, I was golfing with some buddies in Florida a couple months ago, and then they invited me to go on a trip to Europe um, and golf in Ireland. Um, but that would be in September. I have my family. I kind of floated that out there to my wife two or three times and it was a hard no. So I will not be able to do that, but maybe someday. Okay. Okay. Um, that's, that's impressive though, that, that, well, first of all, that you're willing to listen to your wife and you float that by her real quick. I tried a couple of times, but <laughs> okay. there was no genuine ass because I was not. I, going I wonder. I wonder if a puppy for a trip to to Scotland, if that's a fair trade. Like, I'll I'll, I'll get the family a little golden retriever that might find you eight thousand dollars, and I might happen to be gone in Scotland while you're training it. If that's a fair, no. Okay. Nah. Okay. Well, I'm trying for you. It's all good. It's all good. Well, Eric, I'll tell you what, I mean, it's been an absolute incredible morning. I appreciate you getting up so bright and early to, to hang out. It's a busy, busy day, busy week. Uh, like I said, I get to hang out here with uh, amazing guests all week long, and I'm so excited about that. I appreciate you joining us here on this Tuesday morning. And in 15 minutes, I've got to be over in Mastermind to hang out with some of our leadership friends. So if you are an administrator, if you're a leader and you're looking for a place to hang out and, and lean into others, Come join us in 15 minutes. Not sure if you'll be there or not because you've got this fancy new promotion. You might need to walk around and shake hands and kiss babies now. I don't know. I will. Uh, I, I will. I'm at my office now. No one's here. I got here so early and no <laughs> one will still be here in 20 minutes. So I'll be there as well. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So I'm going to just wish people well and say, go out and have a pretzel today. Find a horse to help. Get yourself organized. Go buy a puppy and let it dig up your backyard or just be intentional about growing and improving. Those are all things that you can do today as an educator, as a person, just to improve your life and be a little bit better. So Eric, again, thank you for being so awesome, for being so incredible, for waking up bright and early and celebrating your new promotion with us. Um, Teach Better Family, come on back and join us again tomorrow. We'll be back with another amazing guest having a great time. So Eric, have an awesome Tuesday. I'll see you soon over in Mastermind. Have a terrific Tuesday, everyone. Take care.